G'day everyone, welcome back to True Footy for yet another video this week. Uh, today we're going to be doing a video that I typically do at the midpoint of the season where I assess each team based on their season so far and I give them a bit of a mid-season grade or report card if you will. So obviously I was away for a little bit there so I've missed the boat slightly so we're going to do it uh, before round 16 kicks off although as I record this uh, Brisbane absolutely slapped Richmond uh, last night as you're watching this. So regardless I'm just going to go through each team alpha Alphabetically, from A down to W, and I'm going to talk about how their season's gone so far, what's gone well, what's gone bad, and I'm going to compare how they've done so far to perhaps their pre-season expectations and certainly how they went last year, and give them a letter grade. Before I crack into the video, I will give a shout out to the sponsors of the True Footy YouTube channel, who is Manscaped.com. They have all your male grooming needs. If you're looking to round out or level up your manscaping routine, by all means, head to their website. They've got great products. They've got a lawnmower 4.0, which is their body hair trimmer that you can use on your chest and any other kind of delicate areas, such as your nuts. They've got body wash now, they've got moisturizers, deodorants, they've got cologne, they've got a nose and ear hair trimmer as well, which works really, really well. It's called a weed whacker. So by watching True Footy, uh, you get 20% off and free shipping, but you do have to use the code TRUEFOOTY20 when you check out. So head to the website, level up your manscaping routine, and if you do use the code, you will get 20% off and free shipping. So please enjoy. Cool, so we're doing it alphabetically, uh, and so we're gonna start off with the Adelaide Crows. Um, last year, they finished 14th on the ladder, and they are currently eighth, which is a fairly significant improvement. When you consider their preseason expectations, I think as a rebuilding side, who's been sort of incrementally moving up the ladder under a, um, not a brand new coach in Matthew Nix, but obviously a pretty fresh coach. It was only a few years he's been at the helm. Incremental improvement, and, and therefore being a genuine outside contender for finals this year, probably would have been the pass mark, or at least the expectation going into this year. So we'll talk about what has gone well at the Crows. Uh, I've talked about plenty on this channel that they clearly have the best and most efficient forward line in the competition with, you know, Walker and Fogarty. Phil Thorpe's actually come on really nicely for a young developing tall. Uh, and of course, Rochelle and Rankin in there as the smalls. The youth in general is coming on really strongly. Those young players that I mentioned have all developed really well. Mike Lanny as well is an outside shout for probably not the actual Rising Star Award, but he might get a top five finish based on current form. Uh, they've won a showdown, that's a big plus, and they've competed with great sides this year in particular, most recently against Collingwood, although they, they have done that twice. They've also made Adelaide Oval a bit of a fortress as well, which um, to be honest has exceeded my expectations for a young side. In terms of what's bad this year, they've been patchy away from home, I guess, but that's to be expected. And perhaps you could really nitpick and say, those two losses against the Magpies were winnable games, so they let them slip a little bit. But that is nitpicking, and overall, I'd give them probably an A based on what we've seen this year. Then we've got the Brisbane Lions, who last year finished sixth and, of course, made a prelim. They currently sit third on the ladder, and uh, when you consider their preseason expectations, you'd have to say uh, it'd be a genuine premiership contender would have been the expectation for this year. In terms of what's gone well for them, obviously they're a good side, but if you had to pick out a few points, I'd say the recruits in Dunkley in particular, and, of course, the uh, father-son in Will Ashcroft this year who is you know potentially going to win the Rising Star it's pretty neck and neck between him and Sheasel right now uh, down back Jackson Payne has done a really good job uh, Joe Danaher has really returned to form up forward as well the Gabba has once again become a bit of a, a fortress they've beaten the Pies and the Demons there this year and of course the form of Harris Andrews sort of returning to that AA caliber that we uh, we've come to expect in recent years but he's had a very very good season in terms of the bad I wouldn't say there's too much bad going on at Brisbane um, perhaps you could just point to their one MCG line loss this year against an improved Hawthorne side but again this has been the question mark on the Lions yes they won a final there last year but we're looking for sustained form that they can back up in finals so overall I'd probably give them an A- minus because I think they are genuinely there as a premiership contender this year it just really hinges on whether they can you know improve their form at the MCG against quality sides then we've got Carlton who last year finished ninth and therefore their preseason expectation should have been to at least play finals this year, and they currently sit 15th on the ladder. So in terms of what's gone well for the Blues this year, um, we can point to some individuals for sure. Charlie Kurnow's had a terrific season up forward. He's gonna be a, a serious chance for the Coleman medal. Adam Chera has having probably his career best season in the midfield for them, probably been one of their best, if not the best midfielder uh, in terms of performance this year. Ollie Hollands has also contributed decently as a first round pick last year, and they've continued to be a strong contested side this year. Now let's look at the bad. The, the season has fallen away really poorly after about round four, I think it was, where they were undefeated. 
after round four, you know, I, I think I predicted them to finish top four this year and they've made me look very, very silly there because I think the ingredients are there, but they've fallen away so badly and had some really poor losses this year. The forward line system has also been criticized a little bit. Harry Mackay hasn't really lifted to match um, Charlie Curnow's output in the same forward line this year. And of course, TDK has been dropped this year. So overall, I think this has been a pretty poor season for Carlton and I would give them a D minus to be currently sitting in the bottom four when they should be playing finals this year, at least in terms of their expectations. It's been a really bad year for Carlton so far. Now we've got Collingwood, probably the best team in the competition right now. Last year finished fourth and made a prelim final. And I would say their preseason expectation was to be again, another genuine premiership contender. And that seems to be the case right now. They're top of the ladder on percentage over Port Adelaide, of course. What has gone well for them this year? The good stuff includes the fact that they are premiership favorites right now. Um, and the, the also factor in their closest contender to them in Port Adelaide, and it is the gap is closing. Uh, they at least recorded a big win over them at the MCG. I think that bodes well. They've continued their ability to win close games. Again, that bodes well for finals because they are a clutch team with a really strong mentality. Nick Dacos has also been a huge plus this year. He's arguably the favorite for the Brownlow medal right now. And their recruits have come in in Tom Mitchell, Bobby Hill, Frampton. They've all played roles to varying extents and made that side a little bit deeper. What hasn't gone so well? Well, they've probably, uh, they've copped some injuries to key position players, but dealt with that really well. So that's a little bit out of con their control and they've done well despite that. Um, perhaps you could point to the fact that they haven't had that killer instinct that you normally associate with the top best teams uh, because a lot of their games are around that 30 point mark and obviously a lot of close games in there. So with the exception of the Port Adelaide game off the top of my head, we haven't re really seen this Collingwood side really annihilate teams. Overall though, A+, plus. they couldn't be doing too much more. Then we've got the Essendon Footy Club, who finished 15th last year, changed their coach, and now Brad Scott is at the helm, and they currently sit 6th. In terms of their preseason expectations, I would have just said a return to finals, because they made finals in 2021, fell away poorly in 22. To get back into the finals should have been their main focus this year, and so far, so good from an Essendon perspective. The good stuff, they started the year 4-1, and one. they had a great win over the Ds around that time as well. The fact that they've been able to cope without Peter Wright, who's been a fantastic player over a number of years now as a sort of... Uh, uh, productive key forward for them. They haven't missed him too much. And in general, they've been competitive in most games. They haven't really been blown off the park. In terms of bad, uh, you know, if you had to nitpick a little bit, probably just their team defense, particularly on transition as well. They are a team that concedes a lot of inside 50s. And I think it was the one game where West Coast, I think West Coast had as many, or I think we actually won the inside 50 count against them. So nitpicking a little bit, but obviously when you're playing better sides than West Coast, that might come back to bite you. Overall though, I give them a B plus to be sitting in the top six at this point of the season is a fair effort. And I think Brad Scott is doing a great job at the Essendon Footy Club. Then we got Fremantle who, uh, you know, surprised many last year by finishing fifth and winning a final last year. It seemed like that uh, resurgence had come a little bit early from the Dockers. And this year they've slumped a little bit back to 11th spot. I'd say their preseason expectation should be not to jump into the top four. I would have said consolidate what they've got already. And by that, I mean, you know, finishing the top six to eight would have been a pass mark for Fremantle this year. As it currently stands, they're a little bit out of that mix, but still, of course, in the finals race um, narrowly. What's worked well for them this year? Well, the big question mark for me personally was how their forward line was going to function this year. And at the start of the year, um, they didn't really have that going. But I think the fact that Jai Amos has bobbed up and kicked 25 goals and their forward line is functioning with, you know, just him and a bunch of smalls, it feels like at times. And of course, the recruitment of Luke Jackson as well, I think is a big plus for them as well. He's come in and played a really good role, um, you know, at times forward as a, as a key forward who kicks a goal or two a game. Um, he's also played a bit of midfield minutes as well. I think he's having a great season. Caleb Sarong's also, you know, taken his game arguably to another level. And probably their wins and their, their continued ability to beat tough teams, um, you know, home or away. So they beat the Demons in Melbourne and they uh, had a good win over the Cats as well in Perth. So what hasn't gone well? Well, I, I highlighted the poor start to the year earlier. They had a home loss to North Melbourne in round two, which in hindsight looks terrible. They also lost to the uh, Dogs by something like 10 goals or nine goals earlier this year, which again looks a bit silly now because some of their best form really doesn't speak to that. They don't marry up at all. More recently, they had a big loss to GWS and it feels like there are games where Fremantle is really engaged and where they're not engaged, which is interesting. So it's going to be tough for them to make the finals from here. Honestly, I would probably be giving them a D on current form. If the goal was to consolidate their form, I think they've uh, they've gone a fair way backwards this year. We've seen flashes of the side that um, played really well last year, but at the moment, a D. They are still within the finals race right now, so this is only a moment in time. But at the moment, I think they could be doing a lot better. Then we've got the Cats, who were, of course, last year's premiers. 
And, uh, you know, their expectation this year would have been to compete for a premiership, and they currently sit ninth on the ladder. In terms of what's gone well, well, they had a five-game win streak uh, through the sort of second month of the season, um, and we've seen them at times really flex their muscle, in particular that game against the Swans, where they won by like 93 points. Uh, they beat the Dons, the Crows, and the Dees quite impressively. Uh, in terms of some individuals, Jeremy Cameron's obviously his start to the year he looked like the best player in the competition. And of course, the recruitment of Tanner Braun in particular as well has caught my eye as a player that that's come in and played a role and it's going to be important to Geelong's list transition whenever that happens. In terms of the bad, um, they obviously had an 0-3 start to the year and they had some losses that look bad in hindsight, particularly that one against Carlton. They also lost to the Suns away as well, which might be a little bit disrespectful to the Suns because they've proven themselves to be a reasonable team this year, but it's that those losing streaks that have burned Geelong this year. They had another three loss streak uh, later in the year. They lost to the Giants at home um, and injuries definitely have been a factor and I know that Geelong tend to leave their run late but they're a team that I'd probably be giving a D plus for where they sit currently on the ladder. But again, I'm cognizant of the fact that Geelong probably will motor through in the second half of the year and uh, make their way back into finals. Then we've got the Gold Coast Suns, who last year finished 12th and are currently sitting 10th on the ladder. Um, in terms of preseason expectations, I think we're around that time now where Gold Coast will really be aiming for finals. And if not, make finals be a genuine contender that just misses out. What's gone well for them this year? They've claimed some scalps this year. They beat Geelong, which is, uh, while Geelong were out of form, that's still a really good win. Uh, they beat the Dogs and they beat the Crows this year as well. They're a really strong clearance team. And I think most impressively, that's done off the back of Took Miller, um, you know, obviously doing that injury. And and Raul and Anderson in particular have st stood up in fantastic fashion and Raul himself returning to that sort of potential we saw three years ago. He's starting to deliver on that potential as well. Charlie Ballard is close to one of the best intercept plays in the comp right now. And I think the return of Ben King has really gone to plan. He kicked 33 goals uh, at this point that I recorded. And uh, Jack Lacoche has also won a couple of games off his own boot for them. So plenty of uh, plus points for the Suns based on this year. What was the bad this year? Well, they lost four of their first five games, which really put them behind the eight ball in terms of trying to push for finals this year. I think we've seen improvement from then, but that five game stretch is going to burn them and I think will ultimately cost them finals. They're also ranked 15th for inside 50 deferential, if I'm not mistaken, as well. So in general, a bit to work with for the Suns, but also some clear improvement points. I would give them a B minus. Um, I'd say this season is going to plan, if not slightly better, um, but ultimately they really need to start pushing for finals. Then we've got GWS, who last year finished 16th and are currently 14th. In terms of their preseason expectations, it's a funny one. They're not really rebuilding, but they were a new coach under Adam Kingsley. They've been poorly performed over a number of years now. I'd say they needed to move out of the bottom four and adjust to the new coach and the new playing style. And I'd say we're probably seeing that. What's gone well, Toby Green's a fantastic player. He's averaging three goals a game and 18 possessions. He's been fantastic as skipper. Uh, I think in general, the Giants have clicked in recent weeks and starting to play more the Adam Kingsley way. You do see that with coaches some days, it just clicks. They did also have a win at GMHBA and their other highlight of this year was uh, that big win over Fremantle where you really started to see the evolution of this giant side. The bad? Uh, well, they lost to West Coast. <laughs> Overall, we, we weren't expecting miracles from the Giants this year, um, but I'd say the, the recent improvement in recent weeks has probably led them to get a, about a C, I'd say, is fair right now. Let's talk about the Hawks now. They finished 13th last year and are currently 16th. Their preseason expectations is a tough one because they traded out some experience and you got the impression they were trying to really brace for uh, perhaps a, a year where they weren't going to get too many wins. So in terms of their expectations, I'd say just develop. Have the young players improve. I don't think the ladder position was something they were too concerned about this year. But let's talk about what's gone well. You know, they weren't great for the first, you know, couple months of the season and then they smash West Coast off the park in Tasmania. And since then, we've seen a little bit of a turning point with a little bit of confidence this young side has improved. And of course, they beat St Kilda not long after West Coast. The midfield has surprisingly improved despite the loss of Jago O'Meara and Tom Mitchell, which just somewhat validate their decision to offload those players. Sicily is, you know, continues to be one of the best players in the league, uh, potentially the best for his specific position. Uh, Connor Nash has come on really well this year. James Warple has returned to form to some degree. And also they've introduced introduced some really good youth this year in Mackenzie and Weddle, and I'm sure there's more names that I could name. In terms of what's gone poorly this year, they've had some big losses, particularly at the start of the year. Like I said, they have improved since then, but those big losses included Sydney, Geelong, and Essendon, uh, Fremantle, and Melbourne as well. And I probably shouldn't mention this in a strictly football review, but obviously the off-field uh, distraction that they've had with that racism scandal, it appears to be resolved right now, but overall, I'd say that things have gone pretty much to plan for Hawthorne this year. The youth is playing well, the team's improving as a whole. 
Uh, I'd give them a C plus because they weren't great for the first couple of months. If they continue this trajectory, that may end up uh, improving that letter grade, but I'll say C plus for now. Then we've got the Demons who finished second last year and went out in straight sets. Of course, their preseason expectations, I would just say, would be to be a genuine premiership contender this year. Uh, they're currently fourth on the ladder. So in terms of what's good, after 11 rounds, they were the top scoring team, uh, which unfortunately has dropped to fifth because they're in a bit of a form slump at the moment. Uh, I'd say some other plus points. They've got 60 goals out of Fritch and Kazai Pickett as well. And we know those were really good players as well, but the forward line uh, in that specific sense has produced. The form of Petrarca and Oliver as well, those players haven't slowed down. Of course, Oliver has gotten injured. Um, and, you know, a player like Kay Chandler is probably having his career best season. And the introduction of Jacob Van Royen as well into the side as a second year key forward tall has been very impressive. In terms of the bad, uh, obviously the recent bad patch of form, I think up until about four weeks ago, things were looking pretty good at Melbourne and they've had uh, their slump. So they'll be hoping that this form slump is only temporary like it was, uh, I think they had one back in their premiership year of 2021. To contrast with 2022 where they had a form slump and they never really look like Melbourne again after that point. The other major concern for them was Clayton Oliver's injury. I think he's only one to two weeks away, but that one will be critical to their premiership chances. Overall, I'd give them a B. You know, they, they, they are a premiership contender, but they're not one of the primary ones this year. They're probably, you know, third or fourth back in the pecking order, potentially third. So again, it's only a moment in time, but right now a B for what they've produced this year. Then we've got North Melbourne who were last year's wooden spooners and they currently sit 17th on the ladder. In terms of what they should have expected this year, they were dire last year, let's be honest. The fact that they finished lower than the West Coast, I say it all the time, but I think that's important to this analysis because I would say that their expectation this year under Alistair Clarkson and the recruitment of some mature age players was to genuinely improve, and to some extent we've seen that. In fact, they've genuinely improved for sure, but there's still a little concerns with North Melbourne. So in terms of what's been good this year, their first two wins of the season were great. Uh, they, they came up against the West Coast side that, that was one of our probably top two performances of the year, top three. West Coast were a normal-ish side in round one, and I think North Melbourne played well in that game. And then they backed it up by beating Fremantle in Perth. So clear improvement there. The individuals like LDU, he looked like the Brownlow favorite the first six weeks of the season or something like that. Harry Sheasel uh, putting together one of the better rising star seasons that I've seen in a while, to be honest. He may not win it. Obviously, Ashcroft is bobbing up now, but Sheasel is an absolute superstar. In general, they've improved as a clearance team. They were bottom four last year, and I think they're out middle of the pack now. So in general, that midfield is performing better. And then we've also seen Nick Larkey put together a very underrated season outside chance for the Coleman in one of the worst teams in the comp. So in terms of what's been bad, I'd say the losing streak has been poor. You know, I think we saw a lot of promise in that first couple of weeks of the season, and then they went through a slump of not really being too competitive. Clarkson stepping away is also a bit of a blow. Obviously, he needed time away from the game, but it would be a little bit frustrating, even if you can understand it. They've also had a few big losses this year against Port the Demons and the Lions. Overall, how do I grade them? I give them a D. Reason being is we've seen improvement, but it was a very low bar. And the, the pieces of the puzzle, I think, are starting to get there for North Melbourne, to be honest. In terms of the talent they have, they just need to let it click. And I do have faith that under Alistair Clarkson, it will eventually. I just think their drop off since the first couple of rounds was too poor to give them a C. So they're clearly better than West Coast. They're not a realistic shout for the wooden spoon on car reform, to be honest. But uh, it could be better for North Melbourne. Then on a more happier note, we've got Port Adelaide who finished 11th last year and are currently second on the ladder uh, by percentage as well, just behind Collingwood. So I'd say their preseason expectation, despite finishing 11th last year, would have been res relatively um, high because you know of where they finished prior to that season. So I would have said top four to six would have been a reasonable expectation and they've certainly delivered on that so far. The good, they're the second best team. They've got an 11 game winning streak. They've won something like... I don't know, nine in a row at Marvel. I can't remember off the top of my head. But individually as well, the form of Zach Butters to being one of the best players in the game now. Connor Rosie is, you know, of a similar caliber. And, you know, the introduction of Jason Horn Francis, he seems to have been getting better as the season progresses. Aaliyah Aaliyah down back has returned to that All-Australian form. They've got a win at the MCG. Um, albeit there's another big test this weekend against Essendon. But things are looking great at Port Adelaide. The bad... <laughs> We're nitpicking here. I, I would just say the two blips, the two losses this season, obviously. Um, the big loss at the MCG to Collingwood and then losing that showdown, although as time goes on, that looks a little bit more respectable because Adelaide have come on really well. So overall, though, we've seen a big improvement from Port Adelaide and things are going very well, so I give them an A+. Plus. Then we've got Richmond, who last year finished 7th and probably should have expected to play finals this year, if not top six, based on the fact that they spent a huge amount of draft collateral getting ready-made midfielders in Toronto and Hopper. They currently sit 12th, so I think that's a fair way below their expectations. 
On the plus side, Taranto and Hopper have been pretty respectable recruits, particularly Taranto. He's potentially uh, a serious shout for the Brownlow medal. They've had a couple of highlight wins. They had a good win at Adelaide Oval against the Crows, who have been a good team this year. Uh, they beat the Cats, of course, and they beat Fremantle in Perth most recently. But around that has been some very indifferent form. The, the biggest negative is they kind of find themselves in no man's land at the moment. They're a team that loaded up, you know, in theory for the here and now over the next couple because they've traded out their, you know, their draft picks, which indicates a mindset to play finals this year and they're a fair way off it. So we've seen that the end of an era genuinely now, Damien Hardwick stepping down, uh, but, you know, through burnout. They were in the bottom four recently, although we have seen an improvement in form recently. The trend of losing uh, close games as well did plague Richmond for a while there. They seem to have snapped that a little bit recently. And I do record this a few hours after they got slapped at the Gabba. So overall, I give Richmond a D because this season definitely hasn't gone to plan. Let's talk about the Saints. They finished 10th last year and currently sit 5th on the ladder. And their preseason expectations are under a new coach in Ross Lyon. And with the maturity of the list, I think should have been to at least contend for finals whilst adjusting to a new game style. So if they just missed finals, but we see improvements in style, that probably would have been a pass mark for St Kilda. In terms of the good, they started the year 5-1 and one and look like uh, certainly one of the best, best teams in the competition at that time because they were playing that high-pressure defensive Ross Lyon miserly game style that we used to be accustomed to when Ross Lyon coached good teams. They had that big win over the Dogs, which was eye-opening. It was 51 points. Uh, in terms of individuals, Wilkie and Sinclair down back have been fantastic. I also note that there is some good youth coming through at St Kilda. I think Wanganu Millera hasn't had an understated year off half back. Machido Owens is one of my favorite players in the competition to watch. He's having a great season. Mateus Philippou is an excitement machine. And also the recruitment of Mason Wood. I know it's not his first year at St Kilda. I believe it's his second, but he's really made a home for himself on the wing. And in general, their form without King and Membry has also been, you know, arguably the most impressive element of it all. King and Membry weren't playing during that period where St Kilda were on a red hot streak. So I think they deserve some credit for that. The bad, they haven't won consecutive games since April and there's no doubt that that form has tapered off a little bit. Um, I don't know if it's fatigue or what, but in that time they had a big loss to uh, the Crows, who you know is probably the best forward line in the comp uh, against one of the best team defenses at the time in the comp. Adelaide kicked 121 points. They've also lost to Hawthorne. There's been a clear drop off in form. Overall though, they're still sitting fifth. I don't know if they'll stay fifth, but at this point in time, this snapshot, I gotta give them a B for their performance this year. So we've got three teams left. Let's talk about the Sydney Swans, of course, last year's runner up. And their expectations, of course, would have been to be a premiership contender this year with a young list starting to click into their prime. Uh, but they do sit 13th on the ladder. So we'll talk about the good first. They have looked impressive in their wins, I suppose. They scored 205 against West Coast. And there's obviously a really strong potency there. Obviously, there's no real opponent in West Coast. But in general, when they have won, they've won well. And I think of also that Richmond win earlier in the year. I think it was in Adelaide. The Individual form of Errol Goulden, he continues to uh, evolve into a fantastic elite player in his position. Chad Warner also continues to be an absolute weapon, uh, but also the development of their young forwards in Amate and uh, Logan McDonald as well. Obviously, we're going to see Lance Franklin probably fade off into the sunset at the end of this year. In fact, I think it's official. Amate and McDonald look like they're just about ready to sort of handle that transition. Uh, Nick Blake is also another individual I'll shout out for having a fantastic season so far. The bad, um, it, we do need to acknowledge that the injuries to Tolls, particularly in the back half for Sydney, has been dire this year. Obviously, the McCartan brothers are out indefinitely, I think, still. Sam Reid hasn't played much. I think Hickey was out for a while. There's also been games where the midfield has genuinely been beaten um, and some really poor losses in general. Obviously, a 93-point loss to the Cats. Uh, they lost to the Demons heavily as well. Losing at home to the Dockers wasn't great considering where the season was poised at that point in time. And they also lost to their rivals in the Giants who weren't playing great footy at the time. So it's a combination of a lot of bad luck with injury and stuff like that and some indifferent form, to be honest. So I'll give Sydney a D. The only reason I don't give them an F is for that injury excuse. Now let's talk about the West Coast Eagles. I'm thinking a B. Last year they finished 17th um, and they're currently 18th, obviously, if you didn't know. The expectation this year would have just been to improve and start to develop a game style. And again, I, like Hawthorne, I don't think it was about wins and losses, but I would have thought the four to six range would have been a nice goal for us to have. The form in the first three rounds of the season made it look like a four to six win season was not out of um, possibility, to be honest. 
the game style evolved and um, players individually were starting to show signs of development and then it all fell to crap. But we're going to start with the positives, as many as they are. Um, some individuals, I think Jaden Hunt has proven to be a great recruit. I've spoken in other videos how I think. I was skeptical of that decision and he's proven to be a very handy player for us. Tim Kelly's tried his guts out this year. And finally, the Eagles have some youth to sort of get excited about. Jinby, Hewitt, Long and Hoff at times have all looked really good this year. Bailey Williams and Jermaine Jones, a couple of more mature players that have taken their game to the next level. So it's not devoid of positives, unlike, you know, 2022 probably was. While things are worse, there are probably still more positives out of this year. The bad, everything else. I mean, everything. The injury list, on top of that, pathetic performances. Yeah, I've been ranting about it a lot, so I don't know how much I need to elaborate, but I'll, I'll, a few other points, you know, that no Nick Nat again this year, that the injury situation with him is uh, really frustrating, I'm sure for him as well. And the, the form of some mature players, I think, you know, I've talked about Andrew Gaff a little bit, he's gone backwards massively. I think the Eagles are playing with his role a little bit, it has to be said, um, and you know, even Dom Sheet as well. So, so I don't want to harp on about individuals, but there's been plenty of examples of mature players dropping off massively. And another negative, um, in addition to all of the other crap that we've gone through this year, I'd just say there's a dearth of talent exposed between around 21 to 25 at the West Coast Eagles. So uh, you already know my thoughts in general. I'm going to give them a big fat F. And finally, we'll talk about the Western Bulldogs who last year finished eighth. They currently sit seventh. I would have said their preseason expectations were, this is my own subjective opinion, but I would have thought really going for the top four for a side that has won the premiership yes it's evolved a lot i think there's enough talent there to be doing better than seventh but we'll talk about what they've done well this year i think liam jones was a great recruitment he's played really well in their back line uh the development of jamara Ugal hagen has been really pleasing from a bulldogs perspective he's had some really big games he's showing enough promise to think he will be that gun player that we expect him to be bond and Pelly obviously is an outside chance for the brownlow he's been an absolute monster in terms of wins this year probably their win against Fremantle was the most competitive compelling um, and also they played really well against the Crows at Ballarat from memory and uh, obviously the Crows were a young up-and-coming side and the Bulldogs kind of put them in their place for that week. I'd say the bad probably just their failure to really claim scalps this year if you're going to be a genuine you know contender for the top four uh, you probably need to claim some scalps and their form against the best sides has probably been the clear indicator that they're not quite on their level this year. They lost to the Deans by 50, they lost to the Saints by 51 when they were in form, they lost to the Cats by four goals and they've lost to Port both home and away way this year. Overall, I give the Bulldogs a C. I, I, I don't think, even though I said I expect them to push for top four, that should be their goal, their expectation. Um, I'm not going to give them a D for simply sitting seventh. So while I think they could be doing better, a C is probably fair for the Bulldogs. Anyway, guys, that is the end of my mid-season grades. Uh, I say mid-season, and we're about two-thirds of the way through the season now, but hope you guys got something out of that. Let me know in the comments what you agree with, what you disagree with. If you could like the video, if you enjoyed it, if you could subscribe to the channel, if uh, if you haven't already, that'd be much appreciated. Need some help boosting numbers on this YouTube channel at the moment. And most importantly, check out the sponsors at manscaped.com. For 20% off and free shipping, it really is a good deal. And um, to be honest, I don't know how much longer I will have that deal for you, so strike now. But thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.